Hello, everybody. Um, I see on my end that the webinar has started. And we're just going to give it a couple minutes um, for folks that may be joining to connect. Um, maybe not a couple minutes, maybe closer to a minute, and then we'll jump right into the meeting. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Okay, that should be enough time for folks to get connected and I see the attendee number stabilizing. So we're gonna start. Hi everybody, uh, thanks for joining us tonight to talk about BTA's BART Silicon Valley phase two project. I'm, uh, I'm Doug Moody with the project's external affairs team and I'm your facilitator tonight. Um, I also wanna let you know that we are recording tonight's meeting and that recording has already started. So we, we're here tonight to talk with you about early construction activities for the project, including for the West portal, which will be within the site where the end of the line Newhall yard storage operations and maintenance facility for the project will be, which is in Santa Clara between PayPal Park and uh, the Cal Caltrain tracks. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, to kick off the meeting, uh, Bernice Alanese, who you can see on camera, the Director of External Affairs for VTA's BART program, will provide an overview of the project. As part of this portion of the meeting, uh, Bernice has overview information to share with you uh, about the project, including updates about the project's facilities, uh, funding, timeline, benefits, and early construction activities and accompanying plans. Then following Bernice, Erica Rokes, who's also on camera, a stakeholder manager on the project's external affairs team, um, has information to share with you about upcoming construction activities at the West Portal, um, which is all in Santa Clara, as I mentioned earlier, um, where VTA's BART Silicon Valley Phase Two project will first break ground and begin boring the tunnel. Uh, following Erica's presentation, um, we will pass things back to Bernice to share some things with you about the project's environmental considerations, things like how construction activities will be contained in the project site and strategies to reduce dust and artificial light. Bernice also has information to share with you about ongoing and upcoming engagement activities for the project, including ways that you can continue to stay, in, uh, stay informed and involved. Um, then before we close the meeting, I'll facilitate a session or we'll answer and respond to your questions and comments that you submit to us tonight. Um, for, for that part of the meeting near the end that I mentioned, I'll facilitate. Um, if you have a question or comment you'd like us to respond to, would you please submit it via the question answer window that you can open by clicking on the Zoom meeting question and answer, answer button. Um, the Zoom meeting Q&A button is illustrated in this slide on the screen now. Um, and also a heads up that we intend to prioritize answering questions that we receive um, a lot of submissions about, especially those that we think are the most important to answer tonight. Um, we also intend to place less focus on questions received that we think were answered during the presentation. And we encourage you to submit questions that you think are important to, to ask uh, to us tonight um, as they come to mind. Um, this approach is intended to identify the most significant and time sensitive issues and questions that are out there in the collective conscience and to provide answers to those questions first, rather than following more of a squeaky wheel gets the grease approach. Um, so with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Bernice uh, to share with you overview information about the project. Bernice. Hey, thanks, Doug. Um, and thank you all for um, giving us some of your time this evening to learn a little bit more about the project overall and some of the upcoming activities. So I wanted to start this evening and just get everyone very familiar with this BART phase two project is. It is a six mile extension of the regional BART system. And it begins at the recently opened up Berryessa Station in North uh, East San Jose. It opened up in June of 2020. Um, it includes uh, four stations. Three of those stations are what we call underground stations, but they really have an above ground station building and boarding is underground. And then we have a uh, at street level station in Santa Clara. And at that station, there's also a rail maintenance yard, rail maintenance facility and yard for the trains. Um, the project includes in that uh, blue, light blue portion on the diagram, a five mile subway. We're subwaying um, with a tunnel underneath Santa Clara Street and um, both uh, in the cities of San Jose. And then we rise up into the city of Santa Clara. Uh, there is also um, one mile above grade um, on the uh, east side of 101 and just where it um, rises up from the tunnel um, at the border of San Jose and the city of Santa Clara. And next slide, please. So I wanted to provide a five-year look ahead. This is a very 
um, complicated mega project with lots of various phases. So wanted to break it down to what will be occurring in the next five years now through 2028. Uh, we are in the engineering um, phase of the project and procurement. Um, procurement is like the technical term for awarding the various contracts to uh, finish the engineering and design of the project and to also start uh, the construction activities. We have four major contracts planned for this project. We've awarded one of those last May, and that's for the tunnel and track work. And that will be uh, the contract that um, is delivering all of the near-term activities that we have related to um, early construction work. We plan on major construction sometime around the late 2025 timeframe and going through 2028 and possibly beyond. Next slide, please. This project has several funding sources, both uh, on the federal, local, and state regional level. Uh, if you have lived in Santa Clara County for um, the last few years and as far back as 2000, in 2000, Santa Clara County voters passed a, a measure, a sales tax measure to raise money for this project. Also, another measure was passed in 2008 to pay for the operation and maintenance of this um, new rail extension. And then we had a local 2016 Measure B. So three local sales tax measures. We are in a process to seek federal funding, um, looking at getting just under 50% from the federal government through a program that's called New Starts. We're in the application process right now. Uh, we anticipate somewhere around $4.6 billion coming from the federal government. We, in the meantime, got a letter that gave us permission to keep advancing the project and to continue on in advanced design until we get all the funding needed. We also have state funding um, through various programs. Um, one of them is the Transit and Inner City Rail Capital Program that got some additional funds of recent because of the former surplus that the state had. And we also have a regional measure three. So significant amount of different funding mechanisms for this project. Next slide, please. Wanted to give you a little more detail on each of the stations that I referenced earlier. The station um, going from the east to the west um, in the alignment and closest to the newly completed station in Berryessa is the 28th Street Little Portugal station. This station, if you look at the diagram on the left, it is located at uh, 28th Street and Five Wounds Lane. Five Wounds Lane is one block uh, north of East Santa Clara Street. The station kind of cuts through diagonally through this piece of property. It uh, just tunnels on the east side of 101. So the, uh, the orange portion that you see, that is the platform and that is underground in, in the tunnel. And then that circle is the actual station, what we call the station head house, which is above ground. And in that head house is where you go through the fair gates and you get your tickets and, and um, then go to the elevators, escalators or stairs to get down to the platform. The diagrams on the right show some conceptual drawings of what the exterior and in, interior of the station um, is planned to be like. And we did get some input on the aesthetic elements through a station design um, committee that we had to provide input. And um, this station um, reflects some of the Portuguese heritage in uh, the 28th Street, um, Little Portugal neighborhood. Next slide, please. This is our downtown San Jose BART station. This station actually has three elements. On the diagram, if you look to the far left, um, there is a square and that is the actual station head house for the downtown station. If you look just to the right of that, there is what we call a secondary head house, which is actually a, an additional entrance building. Um, and that is just between North 1st and 2nd Street. And then on North 3rd Street is a small uh, structure where it will provide emergency egress and ventilation. The station is located in close proximity to San Jose State University and the city of San Jose offices and building. Um, we anticipate just under 28,000 riders to go through the station. This has the highest ridership of the four stations that'll be part of this project. Next slide, please. 
This is the Deeradon BART station, and it's located at the Deeradon Intermodal Transit Center, directly across Santa Clara Street from uh, the SAP Center. It is a, a single building station. That large circle is the station headhouse. Um, we anticipate just under 10,000 riders daily for that station by 2040. And um, the drawings on the right, the upper shows the interior and how you would circulate through the escalators and stairs to get down to the platform. This also has an, an underground platform. The center drawing is a conceptual illustration of what the station will look like from the exterior. Santa Clara station is um, the one station that is what we call at grade. So you board the trains at street level. For this particular station, uh, there is a rail yard and maintenance facility that will be part of the overall station area. It is also our end of the line station. It is the end of the extension. We anticipate around 10,000 daily riders by 2040. This station also includes a 500 space parking garage. And I didn't mention before, um, the stations also include bicycle parking. Uh, this station, you would go from street level and then you go up and over the set of um, one set of tracks to an elevated platform and then go back down into a center platform to board the trains going in each direction. And these are also conceptual drawings, both of um, the elevated uh, concourse, we call it, and going up to that concourse and what it looks like when you get to the boarding platform down on the lower right. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned at, at the Santa Clara station, we call it the new hall yard and maintenance facility. Um, it is, as I mentioned, the end of the line for the BART uh, system on this portion of the system. It will also provide a facility for general maintenance of the trains. Um, they will do uh, uh, routine repairs and then storage of the BART vehicles. This piece of land was previously a Union Pacific rail yard um, and we purchased it in 2004. So this is a very similar use to what it used to be for this piece of property. Um, most of the maintenance activities on this site, once um, the system is up in operations, will occur inside enclosed buildings, and that will result in minimal noise from the trains. It will be a 24-hour operation. And Erica is going to be showing you some very details of what's going to happen at that particular site once we begin early construction. As part of delivering this project, it's essential for us to work with community members and do uh, education like um, tonight and provide project information. And that's all part of what we have and it's called our construction outreach management program. There are three elements to that program. One of them is our construction education and outreach plan. That is uh, the advanced planning we do to make sure that we are keeping all of the major stakeholders, all of the residents and businesses near or individuals commuting through the area of the project um, updated on all of the um, activities and education. Can we go back to that slide? I'm gonna to talk to a couple other things. Um, so that we can keep you apprised of project activities and of the various acts aspects of the project, just so you understand more about how we address things like um, construction, uh, signage, and uh, things that Erica will be speaking to tonight, like noise and vibration. Um, another part of this program is our construction transportation management plan. That is what we are putting together right now for early construction work. And then we have an emergency services plan which is a plan to ensure that all emergency services can access the various streets, neighborhoods, and the construction site during construction. And now we can go to that next slide, thanks. So why early construction? The early construction really sets the stage for the major construction. There are things like site preparation. In this case, we're doing these early construction activities at the New Hall Yard. And Erica is gonna go into lots of detail on what that site will be like, what's gonna happen at that site and how it will be used during construction and once it's in full operation. We can go to the next slide. 
and Erica. Now you can give all those wonderful details. Great, thank you, Bernice. <clears throat> all right. The goal of early construction activities at the West Portal Work Area is to prepare the site for the tunneling operations. The West Tunnel Portal is the beginning of the five mile tunnel that Bernice talked about in the overview slide. So preparation activities include constructing the on-site roadway network, the access points onto the public roadways, the parking and offices, constructing and operating the tunnel lining uh, segment facility, excavating the tunnel portal and the excavated materials bin, and assembling the tunnel boring machine. The upcoming slides um, will explain each of these activities in greater detail and show where each of them will take place. Once the site is prepared, the West Portal area will be the central hub for storing and hauling out soil for the nearly five mile tunnel and constructing and storing the tunnel lining segments. I wanna highlight that tonight we're talking and walking through the early construction activities that will happen on this site in the next two years. And then we'll be back to share more details about major construction as it gets closer to that time frame. The image you see on the right is an example of a tunnel boring machine, also called the TBM for short. It's an electrically powered machine that removes soil, rock, and debris to create the underground tunnel. It includes a counter head, which is shown in white and orange on the picture, which ro rotates to dig through the soil and rock. This picture on the right is from the Port of Miami project, and the tunnel boring machine here is 42 feet in diameter. You can see the people standing at the bottom of the picture for a sense of scale. The TBM for our project will be 53 feet in diameter, 11 feet wide, uh, larger in diameter than what you see here. Next, I want to orient you all um, to this graphic here before we talk through what's going to happen um, on the site. So to orient you, the 880 freeway is on the left side of the screen. Brokaw Road is on the right. Coleman Avenue is along the bottom. And the active rail corridor runs through the middle of the screen. I'm going to walk through the features of what will be occurring on the site during this early construction phase. And then once I'm done walking through, I'll describe what the purpose is for some of these features once major construction begins, which will be the next phase. So this area in red outlined is VTA's New Hall Yard property, where the area where these activities will occur. As you can see, the site is directly adjacent to the active rail corridor where UP operates as well as Caltrain um, from 4.30 a.m. to as late as 1.30 a.m. currently. There are three site entrances uh, on Newhall Street, shown with the blue circle, is the employee vehicle entrance. And there are two construction vehicle entrances shown in orange on Newhall Drive and along Brokaw Road. And easily accessible from that employee vehicle entrance is where the employee parking will be, which is shown in blue there, as well as the um, on-site offices, which will all be constructed during this phase. Um, what just popped up now, um, shown in green, is the west portal and the tunnel boring machine shaft, which will be constructed during this phase. It, this uh, work, phase of work includes the construction of the shaft, as well as the launch structure and assembly of the tunnel boring machine, but not the operation of the machine. I'll go into more details in a few minutes on what this entails. Next here in blue, we have the tunnel lining factory where the tunnel lining segments will be manufactured and that facility needs to be constructed during this phase. In addition, it's, it needs to start begin to produce the tunnel lining segments. This area in purple is the tunnel lining segment storage area or where the segments will be stored. In this phase of work, the ground needs to be prepared to store the um, tunnel lining segments. Each tunnel ending segment weighs 40,000 pounds. Next, we have the construction of the grout plant shown in um, brown on the screen there that needs to be constructed in this phase. The excavated materials bin, which is in pink. Um, the site is approximately two acres. This site needs to be constructed. And then we have a, a, a noise curtain that will be installed along the west side of the the site to reduce the noise from these early construction activities. Now I'm gonna walk through what these area features are for and how they're required, and why they're required to be in place before the next phase of work, major construction. So the West Portal and the TBM shaft, which is the area that in green, is where the TBM will begin to tunnel into the ground and the shaft will surge, serve as the launching point um, before it can propel itself. Um, all on the tunnel lining segments that, that get installed. The tunnel lining factory shown in blue is where the tunnel lining segments will continue to be manufactured. And the, the storage area in purple 
is where the segments will be stored. The grout plant in, in brown is where the grout will be um, constructed and developed, uh, which is integral to the lining of the tunnel. The grout will be used to seal the tunnel lining segments in place as the TBM advances and installs them. And the excavated materials bin in pink is where the soils from the tunnel will be stored before they're hauled off site to be uh, reused or disposed of. Next slide. Thank you. The approved haul routes um, include the stretch of Coleman from I-880 to Brokaw Road, and the construction vehicles will be uh, leaving the sites via Brokaw Road and Newhall out to Coleman, out to the I-80 fr freeway. So this is where you would see the vehicles traveling. <clears throat> Before we dig into the construction activities and more specifics, we wanted to talk about what steps we're taking to manage noise and vibrations. We know you're familiar with noise in the area due to the active rail corridor, and we'll be continuously monitoring noise and vibration levels, as well as using additional spot testing during activities that are anticipated to generate higher levels of noise and vibration. To minimize noise, select construction activities will be conducted during weekday hours as feasible. To accommodate activities occurring um, throughout construction, we'll be installing a noise curtain to reduce the noise experienced by local residents, as I described earlier on the layout. There are additional mitigations related to construction equipment and operations, including things such as turning off idling equipment, lining the truck beds with materials to reduce noise, and installing low impact packed backup alarms during nighttime hours that sound more like a swoosh than a beep. Those are a couple of examples. So site access we covered uh, on the bottom of the slide there, you can see the site laid out again with where this, the access points are. Um, in addition, wanted to call out on the, the graphic at the bottom that there's the purple areas. This is where the trucks will queue before they leave the site. Um, there will be truck uh, car wash or a truck wash, which is the example picture on the right, um, so that the dirt and debris that the trucks pick up on the construction site will not be taken out onto the public streets. As a member of the general public, you will not experience any detours or lane closures during any of these um, cons early construction activities. Basically, what, what you will see is some additional truck traffic accessing 880 via Coleman through those um, haul routes that we I sh showed on the previous slide. The planned work schedule for early construction activities includes period of, of time with varying work hours. So I wanted to talk at a high level before we dive into the details of some of those activities. In quarter two of 23, all work will require just single shift work hours and single shift hauling hours. Starting in quarter three of 2023, some activities will require double shift work hours as well as double shifted hauling and Saturday work. And then when once we get to around 2023, excuse me, the quarter three of 2024, it will transition back to just having double shift work hours with single shift hauling and Saturday work. So I wanted to highlight that these extended hours reduce the amount of time the community will be experiencing these activities. So on the following slides, we'll walk through those hours specific to some of the details, but that wanted to give a high level overview first. So a critical component to the West Portal work area will be this tunnel lining factory and the storage area. It's a small facility to fabricate the concrete tunnel lining segments that will be installed in the tunnel as the soil is removed. After they're created, the segments will be placed in the tunnel lining storage area shown in purple before eventually being installed in the tunnel. The construction of the factory and associated storage will take place um, in mid to late 2023 until mid 2024 during standard working hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Once this, the site has been constructed, the facility, excuse me, the tunnel lining facility, it will begin to operate from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. throughout to, to major construction to support the tunnel operations with the produced tunnel lining segments being stored on site. Fabrication of the lining segments will be done within buildings, thus reducing the production sound. The factory must keep the longer hours to ensure the production of the tunnel lining segments keeps pace with the daily use of the segments by the tunnel boring machine. Before the tunnel boring machine is launched, so in this early construction timeframe, there need to be 360 tunnel lining segments fabricated, which is about 13% of the total number of segments needed for the project. The factory can produce six segments per day once it's fully operational. Once the TBM is up and running and at, at optimum seeds, 
it will be able to install 54 segments every 24 hours. TBM preparation includes the excavation of the portal in the shaft, the construction of the launch structure, the excavated materials bin, and the assembly of the TBM. This work requires uh, hours of 6 a.m. to 4 a.m., a few hours beyond when the last Caltrain passes through at 1.30. These activities are anticipated to begin mid to late 2023 and last for about 14 months. I'm going to dive into some details on the next slides. Before we go there, though, this picture on the left is a picture of a tunnel boring machine being assembled. And the picture on the right is a picture of um, supportive excavation rebar cage being installed. Um, for the supportive excavation, it's part of the tunnel boring machine preparation. The construction creates concrete walls below ground to aid excavation and create space for the tunnel boring machine to be assembled. To do this, supportive excavation construction of the tunnel boring machine shaft in the portal shown in green requires using excavation equipment trucks hauling concrete in and excavated materials out and other heavy equipment to dig slurry walls roughly 160 feet deep to then accommodate the 80 foot deep excavation that the tunnel boring machine will launch from. To reduce noise from these activities, the noise curtain will be installed. There's an example of one there shown on the right. This work will be double shifted and requires double shifted hauling to accommodate the concrete pours in the complex se sequence of work required to build this shaft. Now for the excavated materials bin, it will be used for storing the soils that are dug out by the tunnel boring machine. Uh, construction of the bin includes excavating the area where the bin will be located, followed by lining and installing uh, installation of retaining walls to build out the bin further. This is a key construction activity as the tunneling operations can't begin until there's a place to put the excavated materials that come out of the tunnel. This operation will occur um, to build the bin um, Monday through Saturday uh, during normal hours, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and anticipated to begin construction mid to late 2024. In order to begin digging, the tunnel boring machine requires a launch structure to put, push off of. This will serve to help push the tunnel boring machine forward until it's able to propel itself. There's an example of the launch structure in the picture on the right. The launch platform construction must be double shifted and completed before the tunnel boring machine arrives to be assembled on that platform. Once it arrives, work to assemble the tunnel boring machine will also be double shifted to maintain the planned schedule. The picture on the left is a picture of a tunnel boring machine being assembled. Now Bernice is going to walk through some of the environmental considerations for these early construction activities at the West Portal and discuss how the project has committed to addressing them. Thanks, Erica. So I wanted to just share what um, some of the major um, efforts will be like related to these early works. Um, you will experience, um, if you are uh, near or in proximity to uh, the new hall yard, some project truck hauling from the exterior. These are the things you will see outside of the construction site. You will see some construction signage. And then there will be some of the daytime, nighttime, and Saturday work activities that Erica shared and the associated uh, mitigation efforts to uh, reduce um, what those uh, experiences will be for those um, in close proximity to the project. And we can go to the next slide. So um, we also wanna mention ways that we will be reducing dust as construction activities at the West Portal site um, occur. And those include uh, the hauling of soil, the contractor will be covering or moistening trucks carrying loose materials. They will remove all visible mud and dirt on adjacent public roads. Those uh, wheel washers that uh, Erica shared earlier really help control the mud that leaves the construction site. Um, they will be suspending uh, dust intensive activities in high winds, uh, much like some of the weather we experience. Um, we would definitely adjust those activities um, to make sure that uh, we wouldn't be um, doing things that would produce extra dust in high winds. Um, and we would be installing screening around the site as shown in the image below. Um, and Erica mentioned earlier, uh, this is an example of the screening and we hope to do some screening that is um, visually pleasing for everyone who will be uh, passing by the construction site. And we can go to the next slide. 
So lighting is crucial to the project um, to make sure that we have uh, safe operations of construction. Um, but in order to uh, make sure that we don't uh, increase the ambient light, we will make sure that the lights will be screened and shielded and pointed downward directly on the construction activities. So they will not be pointed towards any of the neighborhoods. And um, we will also make every effort to limit the number of nighttime lights that are used to the extent we can to ensure the safety. And as part of this, we will be developing a site lighting plan to implement the strategies to uh, reduce the ambient light that um, neighbors may be experiencing. Next slide. As I mentioned before, engagement is a critical part of uh, this project. And we do a significant amount of construction outreach uh, from the very, very early uh, planning and environmental play, um, phases. We've coordinated with cities um, and the public, and we continue to coordinate with our uh, two of our city partners, both City of San Jose and Santa Clara, um, and as well as adjacent um, developments that are planned and actually future developments. So working closely in coordination uh, we coordinate with cities. We call this wayfinding. What wayfinding is, 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 is providing people direction on how to get around um, and through the construction area. Um, it's the messaging about what, um, and this does not pertain to this part of the early construction works, but in the future, what messaging there might be as to any kind of detours, um, lane closures, um, and such items like that, or um, sidewalk um, sidewalk diversions. Um, we monitor uh, all construction parking and ensure that, uh, as Erica mentioned, we have specific entry to the construction site that any employee working on that site um, going for the day will utilize. We uh, communicate information from the engineering and environmental teams um, on the upcoming um, construction. We have uh, a very comprehensive uh, construction live uh, activities map that we're getting ready to launch that will track all of the construction activities by location. It'll be on our VTA website. And then we do construction notices very much like how we notice this meeting, both electronically, uh, postcards, and then in many cases, door-to-door -door flyering to make sure that those immediately near the activities um, are well aware of what's coming. As part of our uh, ongoing outreach and engagement, uh, we have community working groups. We have three of them and we meet quarterly. Sometimes we have one additional meeting. Our next meetings and everyone is invited to them. They're open to the public are in May the 16th, 17th and 18th. There are three working groups that are for specific station areas. So we have the downtown in Deridon, uh, combined meeting 28th Street and the Santa Clara meetings. Um, we also have been doing a significant amount of tabling events. We've tried to do a minimum of two a month. And as the weather gets nicer, we will be out more. And we'll make sure that um, you are noticed on where we're going to be. So the way you can get noticed on where we're going to be is to sign up for um, alerts and for notices if you go onto our website. You can sign up for all project related information or there are categories that you can pick. If you're specifically interested in activities around the Santa Clara BART station, you can sign up for those. Or if you have an interest in the downtown station, you can sign up for those or you can sign up for everything and anything. We wanna provide you as much information as possible but we do not want to spam you. We also have a construction or VTA hotline for the project right now. It's a general information line, but as we commence into heavier construction activities, it will um, transform into a 24 hour hotline with various prompts to address your specific questions, needs, or concerns. Um, we will be posting ongoing information on our VTA website, and um, you can email any of your questions to our um, VTA BART at VTABSB.com and we will respond to those as soon as possible. I think that is my last slide. Thank you. And Doug, I'm gonna pass it back over to you for the Q&A. Thank you, Bernice. Um, and thank you, Erica. 
lovely, informative, well-delivered presentation. Thank you very much for that. I enjoyed listening. I hope the folks on the, on the webinar did as well. I imagine they did. Um, so now we're moving into the portion of the meeting I mentioned earlier, um, where, we'll, where we, we will answer and respond to questions and comments you submit to us tonight. Um, full, full disclosure, we only have one question thus, thus far. So if you, if you have questions um, that uh, arise after seeing the presentation, you know, we're still gonna prioritize answering them in the way that I said earlier, right? The ones that seem we're getting the most of, seem the most important answer tonight that weren't answered earlier in the presentation, but now, now's your time to get those in. Um, so, um, and use the, the Q&A button here in the Zoom meeting to do that. Um, the way we showed at the beginning of the meeting, we can just click on the little Q&A box that should be there. So while you're submitting your questions, uh, please let me introduce to you the panelists here to answer your questions tonight. Um, so from BTA's BART Phase Two Silicon Valley program, You've already met Bernice, the uh, Director of External Affairs, and er Erica, um, a Stakeholder Manager, and myself also with the External Affairs team. We also have with us, who just came on camera, Bruce Shuchuk, he's a Construction Manager uh, for the project's uh, Tunnel and Track Work team. Um, and then we also have with us from QHH. Thank, thank you, Bruce. I'll stop after I introduce everyone else and give everyone a chance to say hello. Um, and from QHH Trailer, who's the Joint Venture Contractor team for the project's uh, Tunnel and Track Work. We have with us tonight, uh, Louis Pace, operations manager. Louis, you wanna say hi? Luis, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Luis. And we also have Kurt, who's an environmental manager. Good evening. All right, thank you. So with, with that, um, we are going to jump into your questions. Um, the first question we have is, what will access be like to the Brokaw side of the existing pedestrian tunnel during construction? Um, if you want, I can start off on that one, Doug. I, th I think we... let, let's let's give Erica the first shot oh, okay. at it. Okay, sounds and then, good. And then, and then uh, Erica, pass it around as you see fit. Sure, thanks. Um, so access to the pedestrian tunnel will be maintained throughout co the the construction of this this time period. Um, as these activities will be within the new hall yard site uh, that that was outlined on that one slide, there won't the access will not be affected. Bruce, do you want to add on to that or Erica? I think that kind of takes care of it. We'll provide access during the project. Sounds good. Um, let me just click down through some of these other ones uh, I see here. Um, will, there, will there be outreach for people living in campers on Broca? Erica, you want to, want to start that one or pass it off? Um, Yes, the, the, we will definitely be coordinating and, and working in the area as BTA does um, around all the areas that they, they own. Um, Bernice, do you want to expand on, on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we, we, um, we had uh, some individuals that were living in tents and in various kinds of vehicles related to our phase one project. And first and foremost is uh, safety for individuals. So um, if they are not um, parked in a way, you know, we're not we're not going to um, uh, do anything to have them relocate um, unless there would be some safety issue. But we would, yes, I, I think if there were construction activities that were um, related to what they're doing, we would notice them. Um, we could put a flyer on the vehicle, but. First and foremost is ensuring safety. So if there was an issue of safety of somebody parked somewhere, um, we would probably work with local law enforcement to um, have them um, vacate the area. Or if they are not um, in an area that's disruptive to the project, um, we would notify them of activities that might impact them. Thank you, Bernice. Um, that seems like a fully answered question to me. So I'm going to uh, move on to the next one, which we only, we only have one um, left that we haven't answered. So we answered some in the chat, we're answering some of those live. Um, or we answered some in the question and answer box, I mean. Um, do you have an update on when uh, contract package two and four will be reissued? I think that the contract package two is the tunnel and track work contract that that QHA trailer is is working on that has been awarded. And I think that the question was meant for contract package three and four. Bernice, do you want to give an update on, on that? Um, 
Am I on mute? Am I off? Oh, no, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> um, we are still um, doing the uh, contracting uh, strategies for those two contracts. So I don't have a definitive date, but they are forthcoming. Um, the contract package two is the driver for all of those. So there is still some time. So we have more time to advance those contracts um, because we, we don't do that work until um, the, because uh, there's an interface with the tunnel. So that those contracts follow the CP2 contract, which is tunnel and track work. Great. Thank you. Um, that is, let me confirm. I don't see any more questions. Um, so I think we're going to move on. Um, and the, so next slide, please. Actually, next to the, that was what we just did. Next slide, please. Um, so the post presentation survey, you can, you can either go to that website there. And, you know, we are going to post, um, we are going to post the, the recording. I believe the slides, Bernice, Erica, can you confirm the slides will be posted after this meeting? Yes, we will post the slides. <laughs> so, I wasn't so, sure if Erica was going to speak or not. So I did. Sorry, not. you were already off the, so I thought you would just oh. get right. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. So, so we'll post a recording. We'll also have the slides up. So, you know, you can, you can, you can copy and paste that link when the slides are up. You can try to type it in now, or if you use the QR code on your phone, which I think everyone is quite familiar with now that we've been through COVID and all restaurant menus uh, are on QR codes. Just hold it up. It'll take you that link and provide your feedback on the, uh, on what we did tonight. Um, and let me double check the chat. I don't see chat, I don't see Q&A. So that is what we have for you tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for being engaged up until this point. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, please continue to be engaged, stay informed. We look forward to seeing you out at, out at the next opportunity. So thank you very much for being here tonight. Have a great night and we will see you all around. Have a great night, Good everybody. Night. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.